just as long as you're aware you can't fly over the prison. We can't do anything about you being here with it. We, we appreciate that. But as long as it doesn't go over the prison wall. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Audit in Yorkshire. I am down in Peterborough today. Down on an industrial estate at HMP Peterborough, guys. Now, I have had my eyes on this place for quite a while. I've been wanting to do this prison for bloody ages. And I've had a few people asking me to do it as well. So I thought, do you know what, today I'm gonna to bite the bullet set off nice and early and come down and film it as always guys we're gonna have a look round we're gonna go in there we're gonna get some information up place regarding notable inmates and history and stuff like that uh, get some drone footage and then do all do all that stuff usual stuff and then come back to you so So it literally is slap bang in the middle of an industrial estate. There's only one way in and one way out of here, guys, in a car. You've got parking over there. But the barriers are up. There's some parking over there. And then the prison itself. I'll tell you what, it's cold today. Absolutely freezing. And then some industrial waste bins or whatever they are down there and some bollards I'm not sure if that's private property down there or not but let's get into this with some information so HMP Peterborough is a category B, category B private prison for men and a closed prison for women and uh, female young offenders located in Peterborough which is uh, just outside of Cambridge here in England. The prison is operated by Sodexo Justice Services, guys. And is the only dual purpose built prison holding males and females in the United Kingdom. The prison which has a population of 320 inmates comprises four large wings, each with a separate housing arrangement for female detainees and male detainees. It is managed by the Newton Secure Training Centre NSTC and the Associated Training Centre which operates under Sodexo services compromises 26 housing units ranging from 12 storey purpose built units to 10 storey semi private accommodation units. So that's interesting. It's very interesting, it's a closed prison. Uh, for women and uh, young female offenders and it's a category B prison for men so houses male and female pris uh, prisoners it's very interesting <sighs> oh Tell you what, guys, it's bloody freezing. Right. Let's see what we've got here. So the capacity is 840 as of August 2008. It opened in 2005. And is obviously managed by Sodexo Justice Services. Now the history... Uh, H&P Peterborough was built on the site of the former Baker Perkins Engineer Works. The prison opened in 2005, despite a great deal of protest from local residents. Can't think who, because it's just industrial estates around here. Uh, the prison service claimed at the time that Peterborough has a mixed-use prison would become a blueprint for the pris prisons of the future. Peterborough Prison was soon involved in controversy, however, when the jail advertised to recruit two holistic therapists 
to offer reflexology, aromatherapy and Indian head massages to inmates. The MP for Peterborough, Stuart Jackson, accused the prison of pampering inmates and sending out the wrong message to hard-working families. Uh, I can understand why they might think that. So in January 2008, a national table of prisons uh, complied by the prison service revealed that Peterborough Prison had become the last out of 132 prisons and prison clusters with low marks for re uh, reducing reoffending, organisational effectiveness and decency. A month later, women prisoners at Peterborough complained that the food served at the jail was too high in calories and made them put on weight. Officials at the prison claim that healthier options were always available for inmates at meal times. In January 2013, the Ministry of Justice announced that an additional house block will be constructed at Peterborough Prison, increasing the overall capacity of the jail. The prison was the first scene of an incident involving a Royal Air Force bomb disposal team on April 13th, 2018 which deployed a bomb disposal robot to remotely interact with a silver Volkswagen Golf at the prison. That sounds crazy. Authorities revealed the following day that they had been responding to a reported bomb in the car, but this was proved incorrect. Now, you'll have to bear with me um, in this video, guys, because I've literally just got over the flu and I'm still, still feeling a little bit sensitive. So if I sound knackered, it's, it's just because I'm struggling a little bit. It's literally like the first day out since I've been feeling better. Uh, but I need to get some videos done uh, for my channel and for you guys as well. So I do always try and do my best, guys. Um, just going to take some pictures on DSLR. But now I'm going to come back with, to you with some more information on place, guys. So we'll see you in a bit. Right, guys, I'm back. I've just taken some pictures on DSLR. So uh, I can only find two, two um, notable inmates online. I'm pretty sure there'll be more. And what I do like about my subscribers is they do let me know if there's more. So if, if there's anything I've missed, then they'll... Uh, They'll go into the comments and let me know. But one of the notable inmates is a wrecker or Rekha uh, Kamara Baker. Now she is a woman who stabbed to death her own two children in 2007. I think I've heard of that to be honest. I have got a little bit of time uh, today so I can uh, can have a quick look at that. Um, so yeah, the children were Davina and Jasmine. They were murdered by the mother who stabbed them to death at their home in Stretton, Cambridgeshire. Uh, not too far away from here actually. While they slept on the 13th of June 2007. Uh, she was uh, sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum tariff of 33 years in 2010. The BBC stated that the punishment was one of the longest jail uh, terms given to a woman in the UK in modern times. And so it bloody should be as well, do you know what I mean? So it should be. Uh, she's an Indian lady. I don't know how old the children were. Oh, the oldest, the oldest daughter, Davina, was 16. Um, she was stabbed 39 times. The younger daughter, Jasmine, was 13. She was found dead in a bed, stabbed 29 times. Absolutely shocking. And the prosecutor stated uh, that Rekha Baker killed the girls as a form of revenge against her ex-husband and father of the girls. David Baker, uh, the murderer has purchased kitchen knives from Asda the murder weapons on the 11th of June the same year it's absolutely shocking guys absolutely shocking 
and then the the other notable inmate. I'm sure a lot of people have gone over heard of this evil bitch. Um, Emma Tustin. I'm sure everyone's heard of her by now. So she was the evil stepmother to Arthur Libinjo Hughes. Now, if you remember, I did a story uh, about this at Wakefield Prison. Only it was his uh, evil dad, Thomas Hughes, I was talking about, and not the evil stepmother. So I've sort of had my eye on this prison since, since then, since all the way back when I did Wakefield. I've been planning this one. Um, she was the main instigator. Now, Arthur, Arthur Labinjo Hughes, for anyone who hadn't heard of him, was six years old, living in the West Midlands in England. He was abused and subsequently killed by his carers during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the boy was mistreated over the course of several months by his father, Thomas Hughes, and his father's partner, Emma Tustin. Uh, this culminated on the 17th of June 2020, with Tustin killing Arthur via blunt force trauma to his head. Uh, Tustin and Thomas Hughes were convicted on the murder and manslaughter charges respectively in December of 2021. Now, he obviously died as a brain injury as a result of, of the catastrophic injuries he sustained. Now, his biological mother, Olivia Labinjo Hallcrow, um, is in prison, I think. Or she was in prison at the time, anyway. Can't imagine what she must have been going through after learning of what had gone on. But yeah, after Arthur's parents separated in his infancy, he was initially cared for by his mother, uh, Olivia Labinjo Holcrow. But when, when his mother killed her partner in February 2019, uh, responsibility for the boy was transferred to his father, Thomas Hughes, who decided to take his son to live with his new partner, Emma Tustin, and her young ch uh, children during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so Thomas Hughes and Tustin's behaviour towards Arthur became increasingly uh, neglectful, with Arthur forced to spend extended periods isolating from the rest of the household. By the time of his death, Arthur was malnourished, suffering from salt poisoning and covered with over 130 bruises. Uh, the case received significant attention in the local area and across the whole of the United Kingdom, provoking discussion about the protection of children at risk of abuse and criticism uh, against child protective services for their lack of intervention. Now it's funny Actually, it's not funny, it's disgraceful how lack of intervention, how much of it goes on in this country. You know, people keep saying lessons need to be learned, social services need to pull the socks up. Um, you know, look at look at what happened to Arthur, look at what happened to Star Hobson. That's another story I covered at H&P Newall. Um, it's just disgusting, guys. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the story, guys. If you if you want to to read about it uh, yourself, you can. If you've not read about it, just Google Arthur Labinjo Hughes or Emma Tustin. Um, it'll come up with the with the story and what happened. Uh, but we'll, I think we were living in Solihull, Birmingham at the time. And uh, yeah, there's. There's a, a 999 recording as well of Tustin ringing for an ambulance. Uh, I will add that video um, into this video so you guys can hear it. I'll also put the link in the description for it and um, add some photographs of Arthur as well. Uh, we are going to have a little wander, see if we can get a comment from anyone regarding this. Find out if she's still here. I'm pretty sure she is. We just find out how how long she got. I'm sure she got life in prison, life imprisonment, and uh, that Thomas Hughes did as well. 
come back to you in a minute guys yeah that's right so emma tustin was convicted of murdering um arthur at coventry ground court in december 21 and was given a life sentence with a minimum of 29 years she is being held at hmp peterborough which is here and thomas hughes was convicted of manslaughter even though he texts her telling him telling her to end him you know it should be murder as well but it's manslaughter he got 21 years minimum and he is at wakefield prison so yeah i will add some links to the descriptions guys some audio calls and pictures and then feel free to go check that story out yourself and read all about it if you've not read up on it um i'm gonna have a little bit of a wonder come back to you if we get any interactions and then we're gonna to go to some drone footage right guys i've just been having a chat with somebody and um, it went off camera because i won't film it anyway i noticed it he'd taken a picture of me so I, I walked up to him and i asked him what he was doing and he said oh i don't think it's got all to do with you and i said i'm just i'm just trying to be polite mate and uh, I said, did you take a picture? And he went, yeah, yeah, because you were filming me. He says, uh, I'm allowed to because, you know, you're in public and it's, it's in background and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, obviously you're a watcher. Do you know what I mean? That's fine. And when he turned round to me, and I must admit, I've been quite good here, and he turned round to me and he went, you won't get a rise out of these. I went, really? He went, yeah, you won't get a rise out of them. I guarantee you will not get a rise out of them unless you, like, prov provocate them. That's what he was saying. I said, all right, fair enough. I said, well, I ain't here to get a rise in, out of anyone. I'm here to make a video. Anyone who knows me knows I like to do my prison documentaries. Uh, 22nd, I believe, so far, this one. So we've hung about. Out front, where the barriers are. Uh, we've spoke about the history. What the hell, it's Uncle Albert. Yeah, we've spoke about the history. And uh, we've spoke about normal inmates, so we're going to go for a walk now. We'll go for a walk, we'll see what's down here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check the boundary. I'm going to get some drone footage. But we are, we're knocking on for time. I only planned on being here so long. And it's about 10 minutes of time left. Uh, does that lead out into the general public? Does that lead out into the general public? I, I you, mean like a, you mean like a road? Yeah, is it like just, is, uh, it, is, it, is it just a walkthrough? I've no idea, to be honest. Oh, sorry, are you working here? Yeah. Just car parking there, mate, yeah? Uh, stop, car parking. All right, no problem. What's down there? Does that lead on to like an estate or something? Park. Park? Yeah. Oh, so it's a, is this a public through fair? Yeah. All right, no problem. There we go, the guy's just saved my legs. Do you know, I've been waiting up there, top of wet barriers are for ages. Waiting for a GOM to come. And it's so bloody low, the second you walk away, one comes along. But we did just manage to get back end of it. There we go. 14 foot. 4.2 metres. All vehicles to the right. 
side will enter in the vehicle lock. Been fantastic is this little visit. Absolutely no trouble off anyone. No one bothering us. No one coming out to see what we're doing. I think we're gonna get off now guys. We're gonna get we're gonna wrap this video up with some drone footage. <laughs> oh dear me. Drug dogs and equipment in operation. That is the visitors entrance guys and there is visitors there so I don't want to I don't want to push me luck too much this, that looks like it's the electrical system electrical cupboard yeah I don't want to push me luck too much guys and, and force anyone's hand so there is visitors in there you know my you know my motto don't you just because you legally can it doesn't mean you, you, you morally can so something just because something's legal legally right doesn't mean it's morally right and there could be visitors in there who don't want to be filmed might not want anyone to know over here but yet yeah, zero interaction with the staff but it is another, it is another prison ticked off. You know, my aim is to get every single one at UK done. Whether I'll do it or not, two different things, but it's another prison ticked off, guys. H and P Peterborough. I'm gonna go check the geozone now, see where the uh, boundary is. And I'm gonna finish this bad boy off with some drone footage. There we go, some peeping toms. Yep, we'll finish this bad boy off with some drone footage, guys. So we'll see you in the sky. Right, guys, we're in the sky. Usual stuff. We're gonna go as high as we can. There's virtually no wind today. On the other hand, I am gonna delay flight because I have just noticed and then to our members of prison staff coming over to see me so what I am going to do is I'm going to continue to film them on the drone but we're going to wait before we set off properly to see if they are coming to see me or not Are you coming to see me? Just so I know, just so I know whether to wait before I take. Can I just bring it back down? Sure? And I can talk to you. Oh, I'll just wait till these cars go past. There we go. Um, right, I'll have a chat with you now. Okay. Just as long as you're aware you can't fly over the prison. We can't do anything about you being here with it. We, we appreciate that. But as long as it doesn't go over the prison wall. Do you know, somebody said to me about 10 minutes ago, you won't get a rise out of these guys, you know. Uh, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. Hear me out, hear me yeah, out, go on. Yeah. hear me out. So they are here to get a rise. It's, well, what's the point then? I said, the point is, this is my 22nd prison, what I've visited in UK, yeah. what I do documentaries on. You know, what the prison's like, what it used to yeah. be like, who's in here, so on and so forth. Um, and I get paid for videos. 
I said, I plan on doing every single one in the UK. It's yeah. a bit of a mission, like, because there's nearly yeah. 200 of them. You don't sound and like a couple, local either. And a couple on Isle of Wight. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the plan. Uh, are you guys recording me? Our cameras are on, yeah. yeah. Right. The only reason the cameras are on is so that we have evidence of letting you know that yeah. you're not authorised to fly your drone. No, no, that's fine. Near yeah. the prison. That's fine, yeah, but yeah. you are meant to let people know you're filming them. Yes, you are. You're, you're absolutely right, yeah. As, yeah. as well as taking pictures of them. And I understand from some of our officers that you may have taken pictures of them as well. Yeah, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about these two, because... Yeah, but you, you're, you, you're doing the same, aren't you? You're using your you're camera filming. to take pictures of our officers. Yeah, but this is what a lot of people don't understand. Um, because you work for an organisation, you're bound by GDPR. Yeah. I'm not, because I'm an independent, I'm a, just a member of the public. Okay. So, that, I'm not that, having that, a go. Okay, so yes, yes, yes we are you. filming. Yeah. And I told police the yeah. same thing. We're just yeah. here to make sure you don't fly over the prison property. And that's just our evidence, yeah. so that, that, that it's documented that we've instructed you that you're not allowed to, to fly that drone anywhere near the prison. Right. If it's, if it's over um, a certain height, you know you actually can, but I never do. All I do is I go, um, I just go straight up, get some aerial footage of the prison, you know what it looks like. You can't really see much from here, can you? Get a bit of footage, bring it back down. Makes for interesting I, I, I wouldn't, it's all on Google Maps if you want sort of aerial yeah, footage. it's already it's out just, there. That's yeah, okay, exactly. we, can't, we can't stop you. Exactly. We're, so. just, we're just telling you. That's all I talk please as well, because it's, it's on Google Earth, so it's the okay. same thing, what I'm doing. Yeah, but what's not on Google Earth is going across the wall, and that's what we're asking you not to do. Go across it? Oh, I'm not going to go over it. Uh, you may fly over it, don't you? I'm yeah. not going to do that. Yeah. I don't do that. Alright, thank you. I'm, I'm fully aware of all consequences and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. What's the website so we can have a look? The website? Yeah, but all the, where you put it up, YouTube channel or? Oh, I, don't, I never said I had a YouTube, I just filmed for myself. Okay. You said you, you, said you just sold it? Just do it as a hobby. No, I get paid for it. Yeah, you so said you get paid for it. Where do you get paid for it? Well, someone, ask, someone asks me to film, to make videos for them, and I send them, and then they pay me. See you later, guys. <laughs> oh, dear. Right guys, let's try again, we're in the sky again. The uh, the officers are going. Do you know what always makes me laugh when they ask what the website is? You know, who, who said it's for a website? You know why they want that, don't you? I do. So we did, uh, we did manage to get some interactions at last. Why it took three of them to come out and film me and tell me not to fly a drone over a prison, I'll never know. Two male officers, a female officer, and two body cams. But anyway, I am just literally Scraping the barrel of the geo zone. I am out of the geo zone. So yeah, this is the um, prison. Should have asked him about that Emma Tustin, should I? No, I won't sit out anywhere, but never do. I never do refuse to speak unless they want to know something like what's your YouTube channel. <laughs> da, 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 da. There's a lot of a uh, lot of officers who come to work and go home on bicycles here. Oh yeah, so it does lead down to a park. Yeah, this is Peterborough, guys. Peterborough. Lots of stuff car park. So, yeah, one way in, one way out. Driving. Um, it is a dual prison, so... It's category B men's prison and a closed women's prison. What sides they're on, I am not too sure. I imagine... One side will be for men, one side will be for women.
But oh yeah, that's the uh, Geo Amy prison van coming back out, look. So we, we missed that, well we didn't miss it, but we were down at car park when that one came in. And we get to we get to watch it leave. Give me a bit of a look on way past. I think the <coughs> prison guys might have gone back in now to be honest. But yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up, guys. We're going to wrap it up on drone footage for a change. That has been HMP Peterborough. Really hope you've enjoyed this video, because I know I have. Uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you all in the next one, guys.